I'm Jenny Shampo, the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog. We're joined today by Reed Nielsen. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Delighted to be here. Great. Reed Nielsen is uh, an assistant academic vice president for religious scholarly publications at Brigham Young University. He and his wife, wife served as uh, leaders of the Washington DC North Mission. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, um, he was the assistant church historian and recorder of the church and the managing director of the church history department. Right. He's the author uh, um, or editor of more than 30 books and actually began his career as an assistant professor of church history and doctrine at BYU. It's always good to be back at BYU. Yes. So. <laughs> well, thank you again for joining us. You bet. Today we're looking at Ether chapters 12 through 15. And the artwork that we're looking at is by Walter Rain. It's called Marvelous Were the Prophecies of Ether. Uh, this was painted in 2003 as part of a series that was commissioned by uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, all done by Walter Rain on Book of Mormon scenes. And this piece appears in the 2024 Come Follow Me manual. It was also in the 2020 Book of Mormon Come Follow Me manual. Um, so first, let's just talk about who was Ether and what was he preaching to people? Right. Well, Ether is one of my heroes. He's the last prophet in the book of Ether of the Jaredite record. And so he sees very similarly to Moroni, who we're going to talk about here in a minute, the conclusion of his entire Jaredite civilization. Mm -hmm. And he's preaching of the New Jerusalem. He's speaking about the coming of Jesus Christ. He's talking about righteousness and the need for repentance, about wickedness. What happens when an entire civilization chooses not to follow the Savior and what happens to them? What mm -hmm. happens to uh, mm -hmm. the underpinnings of civilization where there's robbers and secret combinations and mm -hmm. kings that continually duel and fight one another? Mm -hmm. um, it's an apocalyptic book in a, in a sense that there's great yeah. destruction by the very end. Yeah, and it's so interesting because the things that Ether is preaching are so beautiful about the gospel and... Right. and um, and actually, Moroni, when he's writing about um, Ether's preaching, uh, he he talks about how Ether preached of faith and hope, and the New Jerusalem and Christ and the restoration and the gathering of Israel. So all this beautiful gospel, but then, like you said, the people reject it, and right. there's this just massive destruction. Yeah, it's a, it's a tragic book. I've always loved the Jaredite record because here you have a people that aren't of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. They're not through the Abrahamic covenant. They're having a very different experience, yet God is extending his covenant to them, mm -hmm. even though they're not of these traditional lineages that you mm -hmm. find all through the Old and, and New Testaments. And so they're given great promises, and they start off so well with the promised land, and they have great hopes for the future. And even Ether, he's talking about the New Jerusalem, this place that they've come to love so much, but also has been the site of the destruction of the Jaredite people, eventually mm -hmm. someday will be the site of Christ's, you know, a second coming, a, a new Jerusalem, a beautiful place, which is really interesting because Ether himself never was in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He's not of the Lehite lineage, okay. right? And he's writing totally separate from the Lehites whose forefathers came from Jerusalem. Okay. So to talk about a new Jerusalem when he hasn't even seen the old Jerusalem, is really, really interesting that this is a, something given to him as a prophet and as a seer that he can see these things mm -hmm. that he and his people haven't experienced. And like you say, there's real parallelism here. Moroni's writing and he's editorializing more than a half dozen times throughout the mm -hmm. Jaredite record. And in this chapter in particular, um, he's, he's talking about uh, uh, the destruction of the Jaredites, but at the same time, he's likewise been hiding in caves and other yeah. places just like Ether right. and he's witnessing the same destruction for the same reasons of the Lehite people mm -hmm. of the Nephites you know his own descendants and uh, what I love about both Ether and Moroni is they express hope in covenants that were given to the fathers that eventually someday ancient inhabitants of the Americas in this case the Lamanites would be redeemed and would actually help build the New Jerusalem Mm -hmm. and they'd be able to uh, draw upon those covenants that they'd made with the Lord through their fathers. So yeah. the book's both tragic, but it's also very hopeful because at the end of the day, Christ's team is successful and victorious in that sense. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that sort of duality is pictured here really well by uh -huh. Walter Rain, just 
to look at this as an art historian, um, there's a real stillness here, um, especially compared to a lot of Walter Rain's pieces, which are so dramatic. And um, this one just feels very calm. The colors are muted and monochromatic. Um, and then I'm really interested in the way there's these two spaces. There's the cave space that Ether is protected inside that takes up most of the, the canvas. Uh -huh. And then outside of it is this sort of dark and dreary world out mm -hmm. there. Um, and, and marking the boundary between the two is a, a sort of dead branch of a tree coming down. Um, and, and I like this idea of the prophet um, being protected by God in this space. Um, he's, he's in the world, but still protected by God. But I also see just so much emotion here. Can you mm -hmm. speak to that at all? Or how does this resonate with you personally? Well, when I first saw this image, and when I think about both Ether and Moroni, because mm -hmm. both of their records are you know, interspersed yeah. in, in these chapters, I just think of great loneliness, uh, mm -hmm. the solitary nature of, of confinement. Ether, as one commentator has pointed out, is, finds himself in a cavity of rock. Yeah. Not even a cave, which su suggests maybe more space, but a cavity of rock, maybe like a cleft of rock that he has to hmm. secret himself in that wouldn't be particularly comfortable, that, that would uh, maybe be claustrophobic to him, that mm -hmm. would not be a, a, a great space to hide. But the alternative mm -hmm. for both Ether and Moroni is death, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so they, they remain hidden. And then at nighttime, it talks about Ether venturing out at night. It says that that's when he saw the destruction of his people, oh, okay. which I thought about what does that mean that, that he needs to hide during daylight, mm -hmm. but then he sees things at nighttime when he wouldn't have great vision. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which is kind of interesting. But, but as I see it, the emotion that it evokes in me really is just that solitude, just mm -hmm. how lonely mm -hmm. Ether must have been. Mm -hmm. and how Moroni must have been editorializing on Ether's record. I think the two men understood each other, mm -hmm. not only as prophets in their, their office in that sense, but just the fact that, I don't know of two other men in the entire Book of Mormon stories that were alone for so long yeah. by themselves. I mean, that, that would be yeah. just, that would be really hard. Yeah, so. really interesting parallels. Like you said, prophets that are keeping the record in Iraq watching the destruction of their, their own civilization. The record here is, is highlighted very clearly, and we see Ether holding on to that. Yeah, they're both record keepers. That's mm -hmm. something I've always loved about both Ether and Moroni and his father Mormon, of course, mm -hmm. um, that they're compiling these records, and it was very, very important for them to be witnesses mm -hmm. in this case uh, of destruction. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you can be a witness of great righteousness, mm -hmm. and you can praise God, and bring glory to him yeah. and the kingdom for witnessing great things happening. Mm -hmm. And in other cases, there's these moments in the Book of Mormon where they become idol witnesses, in the words mm. of Mormon, I believe, where they're simply responsible to witness yeah. destruction. Yeah. And uh, anyway, it's sad, but I'm so mm. grateful we, we have the record. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, a tragic ending uh, in this moment, but ultimately right. uh, we have that hope and, and faith in, in the redemption to come. Well, and it's amazing, as you pointed out earlier, that in these chapters, they're talking about the New Jerusalem. And mm -hmm. this is the, the place where it's talked about more than any other time in the Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. here in these chapters in Ether. This idea that America would eventually be redeemed in a very marvelous mm. and uh, incredible way. Uh -huh. um, Anyway, and yeah. it's there, Ether, he's writing about that. So he sees yeah. both the most horrible things yeah. and the most glorious future at the same yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, so. and I think, I think this painting really captures that contrast, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. Oh, you bet, this has been a delight, thank you.